Hey, what's up guys? Today, I'll show you an action horror film. Night Watch, Part 2, Day Watch. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins with a narrator recalling the past events from the first movie. He explains the clash between the forces of light and darkness, who eventually came to a truce many centuries ago. But he also warns of a new prophecy when the night would become longer than the day, and the forces of darkness would overwhelm the light, and the world would plunge into darkness with the arrival of a new great one. Only the chalk of fate, which is kept in an impenetrable fortress, could save them, but all those who have journeyed the maze have only perished inside its walls. The movie cuts to the frozen tundra of northern Iran, where the Tamerlane army rests. A young commander inside the tent eats a piece of chicken, while he holds in his other hand a map of the maze. He examines it and searches for the proper way to navigate the maze, until his hand pokes a hole through the map, and he suddenly gets a breakthrough and rallies the army to enter the maze. Hundreds of cavalrymen charge through the walls, and it turns out, the breakthrough the young commander had was that the walls are merely a mirage. The soldiers cover the eyes of their horses and smash through the thick walls of the fortress. Inside, the light leader from the first movie feels the rumble of the cavalrymen. Fighting erupts as enemy reinforcements arrive and fight the Tamerlane army with such intensity. The young commander from earlier manages to fend off three attackers who took the form of ravens. The last enemy begs for mercy and tells him where the chalk of fate is hidden, so he spares the enemy's life. He smashes through the wall where the chalk is hidden and comes face to face with the light leader, but the enemy he spared earlier stabs him in the back and he falls down dying. The light leader tells the young commander that if he wants to live, he should write it down with the chalk. After he writes it down, he finds himself suddenly sent back to the time when the enemy tells him where the chalk is located. He's confused at first, but this time he kills the enemy soldier and kicks down the wall. It cuts to New Year's Day of 2006, when Svetlana and Anton, who had met in the first film, drive through the highway. After the events that led to Svetlana breaking her own curse, she became a trainee for the light army that Anton serves. She tells him the story of the young commander, but he tells her to stop because he finds the existence of the chalk to be far-fetched. In the evening, Anton tells her that he's hungry and offers to take her out to dinner tomorrow. She asks where they would eat, and he tells her that there is a Chinese restaurant nearby. Suddenly someone radios in and tells them that a human being has been attacked. An old lady has become another victim of a recent pattern of murders that had the victim's energy drained. Anton tries to tell the person on the other end that he cannot deal with the dark one right now because Svetlana is still a trainee, but she steals the radio from him and radios back that they could handle the threat. They drive their way into a busy crowd and Svetlana rushes ahead. She sees the old woman and helps her up, while Anton removes the needle that the Dart One is using to suck her energy. Svetlana spots the Dart One and runs towards him, with Anton following close behind. The Dart One retreats into the gloom, and Svetlana follows him by wearing the sunglasses that make her see and feel the other dimension. Anton follows her through and notices the swarm of mosquitoes in the gloom. He sees Svetlana still rushing ahead, and he tries to follow her, but is stuck behind a glass wall. He screams at her to go back, but she does not hear him. Svetlana notices the Dark One from earlier, so she grabbed her weapon and aims it at the Dark One, but Anton stops her and brings them both back to the real world. She gets mad at him for stopping her and asks if the Dark One is someone he knows. He nods and tells her it doesn't matter anymore. He doesn't reveal to her that the Dark One turns out to be the boy from the first film. Anton had discovered that the boy was his son, and when his son learned that Anton tried to kill him when he was an unborn child, he fulfilled the prophecy by choosing to join the Dark Force. The scene transitions to the Dark Lord dancing with another woman. Suddenly the boy arrives at the hotel. He confronts the Dark Lord and asks how it was possible that Anton and Setlana followed him into the second level of the gloom. He manages to calm the boy down. Later, Anton and Setlana are back at the scene where the incident happened. Anton hands the hat of the boy to a man. The hat is the only evidence they gathered. The man asks Anton if he is able to see the boy's face, but he tells him no. He asks for Anton's car keys, and he gives them to him happily. Back in the hotel, the Dark Lord plans to steal the boy's hat back because he knows that the Night Watch may be able to track the boy down. In a restaurant, Anton and Svetlana eat dinner. Anton gets a call regarding the hat, but he hangs up immediately. He tells her that she will go far in the Night Watch because of her instincts and skill that she showcased earlier. The Light Leader enters the restaurant and reminds Svetlana that she has a lecture today, causing her to reschedule their meal for tomorrow. The man notices how close they are, and he warns Anton that it's forbidden to have intimate relationships with trainees. He also reminds Anton that Svetlana and the boy can never cross paths because it would mean the end of the world. On the other side, the Dark Lord prepares a grand meal for the boy and tells him that tomorrow will be a big day for him because it is his birthday. The boy refuses to go, but the Dark Lord simply laughs. 
A few hours later, Anton is still in the restaurant, reading about the young commander and the chalk of destiny. After a night of drinking, the bartender tells him to go home, or he might get into a fight. On the way home, he continues to read about the young commander, but he struggles to make his way home. He finally arrives at the entrance of his home, despite being heavily intoxicated. But before he could go inside, a car stops nearby and a woman calls out to him. She was the woman earlier who called about his son's hat. She tries to explain to him that the boy is in trouble, but he simply does not listen. Instead of heading home, Anton breaks into the lab by distracting the guard, who's watching the soccer game. He heads inside the evidence room and begins his search for any signs of the chalk of fate and any evidence that incriminates his son. He wraps his fingertips to avoid leaving behind any fingerprints. He finds a box labeled Chalk of Destiny, and inside, he finds a letter and map of the impenetrable fortress. The letter speaks of an expedition to the maze that was denied. The woman from earlier heads home, but starts hearing a voice that introduces itself as a judge. She quickly runs up the stairs. She looks down, but notices that no one is following her. She breathes a sigh of relief, unbeknownst to her that a man is behind her. She is stabbed as her screams echo throughout the building. The next day, a forensics team comes and examines the dead woman's body. A light one and a dark one meet up at the scene of the crime to conduct their own investigations. The badass dark lady tells the light soldier that they know who did it. A few moments later, the badass races through the highway. She reveals to the dark lord that the woman who died, who was also the boy's teacher, has been found murdered. The dark lord is enraged and tells her to find evidence of who might have done it. Anton checks his inbox and finds that the Dark Lord sent him an email thanking him for destroying evidence that could have incriminated the boy. Anton destroyed the hat because he knew that his son was the Dark One that the Light Army was looking for. Anton attends a meeting with Light Leader and he tells them that they are beginning to conduct an inside investigation and wants them to write where they were the night before to see if their alibis would match or not. The Baddest meets up with a young vampire who was Anton's neighbor. She asked him if he knew the whereabouts of his friend Anton. The neighbor tries to walk away, but she mentions the woman's death. He tells her that the dead woman talked to Anton last night. She then calls the Dark Lord to tell him what she discovered. This effectively frames Anton for the woman's death since he was last seen with her. The Light Leader decides that they have no choice but to turn Anton over to the Dark Ones despite his alibi. Anton comes into the room. His female owl partner, Olga, tells him to sit down and wait for the boss. The Light Leader appears from behind and strangles both Olga and Anton. Anton later wakes up to find himself in the body of Alba. The Light Leader apologizes to Anton, but he knew that he would voluntarily do it. They decide that Anton should stay with Svetlana for a while until they catch the killer. Anton, in the body of Alba, visits Svetlana during her class. He excuses Svetlana and tells her to come with him. Anton struggles to mimic Olga, but Svetlana does not suspect anything and they drive off. She reveals to Alba that she loves Anton, which causes the Anton inside Alba to drive off-road and crash into the snow. They arrive at Svetlana's home. While she is in the shower, Anton decides how to explain his situation to her. Svetlana calls him to the bathroom to get her a towel. He reveals to her that Olga and he switch bodies, which deeply angers Svetlana. She tells him that he took advantage of her and tells him that she never wants to see him again. He pays no mind and tongue massages her passionately for her love confession, but without hormone let go. The badass visits the young vampire once again, requesting his help. She tells him that they cannot find Anton, and they think he switched bodies with a woman. Anton, still in Alba's body, heads out to dinner with Svetlana. She asks him again about the boy from the incident the other night and why he means so much to him. He deflects the question again and simply refuses to answer. He excuses himself to the restroom, but finds a dead body of a dark one in the stall. He understands that he has been set up, and they run away from the restaurant. The light leader picks them up and scolds Anton, telling him he should have stayed in the apartment. The Dark Lord and his army surround Anton and the others. The light leader meets up with the Dark Lord, who tells him that he's officially filing a charge of murder against Anton. The light leader tries to buy time by saying Anton was not her, but the Dark Lord tells him he knows Anton is in the body of Olga. They try to take Anton away, but after seeing the light leader do nothing, Svetlana tries to fight the Dark Lord. A bus suddenly crashes onto the Dark Lord, angering him. Anton manages to escape in a taxi, despite being chased by the Dark Lord. Representatives of the Dark Lord later came to the Light Leader, telling him that if Anton is not proven innocent by dawn, they will issue a warrant for his elimination. The Light Leader refuses to hand Anton over despite the possibility of war. Anton calls an acquaintance of his and tells him that he's flying to the impenetrable fortress to find the tomb of the young commander, who presumably has the chalk of destiny. The Dark Lord is also made aware of this and begins planning a way to intercept him. Anton calls Alda and tells her to meet him at the airport so that they can switch bodies. 
After switching bodies, they make their way through airport security and run as fast as they can the plane. Despite the disturbance, the plane manages to take off. She reveals to him that the chalk of fate isn't in the tomb, because she also tried to search for the chalk back then. But once they opened the coffin, the chalk was nowhere to be seen. Anton realizes that the chalk is with the bartender who warned him earlier. He tells her that they need to go back. Anton enters the cafe where the bartender works. He asks for the chalk of destiny, and the bartender hands it to him. With the chalk, he writes down the name of his son, and immediately the boy is summoned to him. He rejoices that he has finally reunited with his son. Setlana tries to call Anton, but his son answers instead. The boy tells her that he has a family, and asks her not to call him ever again. The boy smashes Anton's phone when it rings again, and takes the chalk of destiny with him when Anton refuses to repair his relationship with his mother. Anton calls the boy's mother to see if she knows where he is, and she tells him that he is asleep. He hangs up. He tries to hitchhike a ride, but Dart ones chase him down. He narrowly escapes them, and ends up in the subway station. The Dart ones find where he is, causing him to get on board one of the trains. The boy takes the chalk to the Dart Lord, who gives it to the badass, and the badass uses the chalk to summon the young vampire. Anton takes the face of one of the Dart ones, and attends the birthday party of his son. He tries to enter the main hall, but gets into a fight with one of the guards. He gets badly beaten up, but escapes by entering the gloom. Anton finally makes it into the main hall, where the party is being held. The Dark Lord tells him to say a few words to his son, but whenever he says anything, the crowd ridicules him. Anton gets drunk, and tells the Dark Lord to have a beer with him. The two argue whether or not Anton is innocent. Vandy tells the Dark Lord that anyone could have done the crimes he has been charged with. The young vampire's father comes to the party. Anton approaches him, and asks why he is there. The father tells him he has come for his son. Anton then gathers everyone's attention, and reveals that the one who has been murdering the Dark Ones is the young vampire's father. The vampire's father tries to kill Anton, but is stopped by his son. Suddenly, judges from the Inquisition declare Anton innocent, and the young vampire's father guilty of violating the truce. They take the father for elimination after his confession. The Dark Lord kills the young vampire after the judges leave. Setlan arrives at the hotel, and searches for Anton inside. She finds him on the dance floor, his face covered with blood. He tells her that it is all fine, and that she should go home now. The son sees Svetlana, and takes this as an opportunity to suck her life energy. Alda calls her, which snaps her out of her trance earlier. Alda tells her to stay away from the boy, because it is a trap, and Anton was drugged. Svetlana pushes the boy, causing his nose to bleed. The Dark Ones count it as a violation of the truce, and declare war on the Light Ones. Alga and the rest of the Light Ones see that the war has started, and enter the hotel. The boy has become a great other that was in the prophecy, and kills the rest of the guests, and even manages to destroy the city. The badass tries to revive the young vampire using the chalk of fate, but it doesn't work. Anton convinces her to give it to him. He runs out of the hotel into the ruins of the city. There he finds his old house, where he made a deal with the witch in the first movie. He then uses the chalk on the wall, and as a result, time is reset back to 1992, where everything is at peace. The movie ends with Anton backing out of his deal with the witch, which prevents all the events of the film from happening again. He meets Setlana again, and despite not having any memory of her, he still recognizes her. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.